Welcome to Fiora. I do have a couple of announcements. There's an annotation up right now. That is to sign up to get gold codes. I've gotten some gold codes from Wargaming. They're ready to go. I just have to figure out how I'm going to give them out. And here's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to pause this replay just before we start to explain how I'm going to do it. You guys are going to sign up. And then in two weeks, so on starting on the Raw Tankery video on July 20th, I am going to randomly give out a code. I will then proceed for the rest of the week, because I have seven codes, so for seven days, to give out a code for every single day in a video that I will not tell you which video it's in, nor where it is in the video. You'll have to watch. Um, if the code is not claimed within three days, I will then re-give it out. So you have 72 hours to basically just watch my videos. I'll be putting out two videos a day. Um, 24 hours after the video goes out, I will come back and mark it with the title to say Gold Code Inside. So you guys know that somebody has won a gold code. So. There's your sign up, there's your information. I'm going to be announcing this all through next week to make sure I get as many people signed up for the gold code as possible. In the meantime, our warm up to match tonight is the T40 with Digger. Digger was in his T67 last yesterday, actually. I'm trying just to take like a random replay I've gotten sent from the day. Doesn't matter what it is, just a replay from the day and use it and then you guys get the main match after that. So there's another annotation up right now if you want to skip the warm-up and go to the gut-wrenching match that comes down to the final seconds in the Centurion 7-1. But in the meantime, his team has just yolo Death Valley and gotten slaughtered. They're down 5-0. This is the part where most tankers do this number. Because what are you going to do? You've lost a third of your team in the first two minutes. Actually, that was the first minute they lost a third of their team. Now they're starting to drag a kill back or two, but still. Yeah! This is the part where most people just facepalm it. It's a wonder the enemy hasn't realized yet that they sent nothing into town. They've lost six tanks now. His T-40, however, is holding out. Hello, A-20. I'm the T-40. <laughs> Whether I have the overpowered-ass 75mm or the derp gun doesn't matter. I'm still going to knock crap out of you every time I hit you. Ooh. T-127. Those are kind of rare now. I have one. I just haven't really used it. Digger is spotted. Interesting. He has six cents on a tier four. He must really like his tier four. Oh, lit him on fire and terminated him to put him out of his misery. Uh huh. That might have hit. <laughs> There's another flaming wreck. Wow. Okay, they've now drugged this back to a game. It is eight to nine. So this is now actually a match. All because, well, Digger and the SU-85B have a brain and are using it. Congratulations, guys. Don't know why he took that shot. He needs to look on his map right now and see the Crusader, or the Cruiser. Enemy armor is damaged. Ow! Oof, dead Cruiser. I think he was trying to blind fire at the Martyr that was last located there. Score's tied up. That's a comeback. To go from 0 to 5 to 9 to 9, that's a comeback. Granted, I think Digger's been very fortunate right now because he's been spotted a couple times and no, and only one person actually shot him, and that person's dead. So he's been actually pretty fortunate that nobody prioritized his T-40. Also, T-40 does have a significant amount of frontal armor, so it is kind of hard to prioritize it. But I'm wondering when the birch gun is just going to pick his spot and blast him. 
Seriously, you're open. Not you're an open top TD. You're like every Artie's wet dream. But we're sitting here, and nothing's happening. And oh my god, my hair's a total wreck. <laughs> it's late, guys. Um, I was up late playing with a bunch of you, and just got carried away. So it's now 3 a.m. and I just started recording. So I'm going to bed at like five, and then I'm live streaming for you guys tomorrow. Hmm. Anyway, let's see what he can do. Oh, BT-7 trying to sneak in. Nope! He does get spotted, so he has the sense to move now. I also find it interesting that his standard ammunition is on 2 and his premium ammunition is on 1. And that's kind of backwards to me, but if you want to go for it, go for it. This is the tension moment when we're all sitting here quietly debating on what to do because we know at any moment the enemy could appear and take this match back. Especially that Martyr 38. Yep, there's the Martyr. Ah, that thing hits. Digger's trying to guess out that martyr. Which I don't think is going to work. I think the martyr has definitely relocated. Because he took that shot without being spotted. So now it's time to get over to the enemy. Oh! 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 Close range fight with a light tank! Oh, if the light tank's smart, he'll flank him. Yeah, the Martyr definitely is relocated. The Light Tank is, however... He's smart enough to stay behind cover. Oof, that's a miss. Digger, you gotta hurry. That Birch Gun will let you have it and you'll be gone. Oh, if they kill that Birch, kill that Birch. If they kill that Birch, then Digger's fine. Oh, they're raining around around of the Light Tank. He's gonna have to make a decision. Birch gun's down, so now Digger can sit here and take his time. He doesn't have to worry about the already smacking him. He's going to go ahead and push this guy out and see if he or his allies get him. Oh, he's got him! And see, this is an excellent opportunity to point out he did right. He did not push out to the normal position in town because he realized his he had no support. Instead, he set up to receive the enemy, and it has paid off immensely. Ah, uh, low roll denies him the kill on the martyr, but that's the end of this one. So don't forget to sign up for your gold codes. It's in the description below. In the meantime, we're going to move on and have a look at the Centurion 7-1. Alright everybody, so as promised, the Centurion 7-1. By the way, this ISU-122 is hilarious. You guys can see, I run no mods. When I'm live streaming, I run no mods. And he's going to sit there and report me and scream at me for being a hacker. He's like the worst troll ever. And to those who don't know, everything in this game is resolved on server side. So you have to actually be in the server room to hack. Because... 
you have to actually be directly connected to the server to change what the server is doing. That's why when things lag, you tend to keep moving because the server hasn't received a signal to stop doing what it's doing. I, however, am going to gladly take a cheap shot. Hello, Doom Turtle. How are you today? L7 gun. Up T-34. Now this T-34, I really think he has more balls than brains. Because there's time to have balls, and there's time to have brains. This is not the time to have balls. He misses his shot. Which means he just suicided for a zero damage game. Bye. Alright, he's dealt with. Who's next? Already shells landing all around us. Oh, T95. Don't mind if I do. Oh, I got another shell fly flung at me. But the L7 gun gladly penetrates the side of the T25, of the T95, even at that angle. This gun is so awesome. Also, for those who are curious, the Centurion series of tanks has a very low W8 requirement. I'm going to say very low. Um, I'm expected to do 1500 damage with this tank. The Centurion 1, I'm expected to do 1,200 damage. I've already done my damage requirement. Anything past here, it puts me into green and then Unicum status as far as, you know, stats go. So, I love this tank already. It's just, it's so good once you get it upgraded. And even when it's not upgraded, it's still pretty decent. Hello, IS-6. How are you? Enemy You're it. You missed me. Alright, so our team is now losing, by the way. We're down tanks. This is why this is going to be labeled Epic Match of the Week, because this is going to come down to the wire. Um, the Centurion 7-1 is an amazingly good vehicle if you know how to use it right. It's not the fastest medium tank in the world, but it's definitely faster than the most heavies. I make the decision to advance in here and get rid of these IS class tanks. One way or another, they're both going to have to die. I'm spotted. This IS-8 is actually dumb enough to try to come out after me. With my gun pointed right at him. I'm very aware of the IS-6 to my left, so I'm not backing out just yet. I'm waiting till I'm unspotted and can move away. Sent reported. For, for what? Like I said, this guy's hilarious! All through the match, he's whining about how I'm a hacker. Clan stats are hacked. By the way, we're now down 4-7. to seven. We are losing this match very badly. This, however, is kind of hilarious. Hi, IS-6. How's your rear armor? Not good, I hear. How's tracking you? Okay. You're going to turn your turret towards the mountain? Well, I'm going to run the other way. LOL. Bye. <laughs> And the reason I'm able to track him and roll away is because the Centurion is actually heavier than the IS-6. I weigh 52.6 tons, fully kitted out. My IS-6 only weighs 51. I may be just be barely heavier, but that extra weight makes a difference. And the engine, the upgraded engine, allows me to dodge that Roomba shot because nobody, expe nobody expects this tank to go fast. But it accelerates extremely quickly, and this is going to hurt. Ow. Okay, fix my ammo rack. Oh no. Oh no, you do not get to pull that shit. Goodbye. There's getting away with murder, and then there's no, not in my house. And that's not in my house. Sent reported. For what? 
He blew. He he messaged me afterwards, by the way, and said he blew all ten of his reports on and sent a ticket into Wargaming for my hacking. This is funny. I was actually, you know, as tense as I was most of this match, I was laughing. By the way, the match is now tied. Oh, T95. He's actually rolled across the swamp. I'm reported again. I don't know what for, but whatever. I'm changing over to an APCR shell. The problem I have with this tank is you constantly are switching shells. Um, you want your Hess shells for lightly armored or lower tier stuff because you can just punch right through with 230 pin. But you want your APCR shell for everything else. You also don't get you know any heat rounds or or high pen shells you either do extra damage or you deal with the fact you only have 268 pen which I'm really hoping they don't penetration nerf this tank because I really have to rely on that 268 pen to function I don't get a heat round um, the chieftain in armored warfare which you guys saw earlier today has the same problem it, it you either fire sabos or you fire hash so yeah, I spot that guy, but I'm in no position to engage. Uh, snapshot, no. You do have to let this gun aim. That is a problem. That I will fully admit, you do have to let the gun actually aim. Now who's ready for something very humorous? Because as we're about to find out, the Centurion 7-1 actually has frontal armor. I've gotten three kills so far. Done a lot of damage. And fired an awful lot of shells. And now I'm trying to take on two tanks by myself. Two tanks that can be one shots, by the way. This is going to hurt. Well, my 268 pin is going to knock you right through. Ow. If I just faced him, I'd have bounced him. Now I back up, and I get ready to roll back forward and trapped. Okay, well. Uh, I think that's my game. Wait, what? Oh, right. You can't. You have to actually move up to shoot my front plate. Keep going. All day long. Bing. By the way, that ISU 122 has 65,000 battles and still doesn't understand how the game works. Hey, AT15, I'm still here. That doesn't really hurt. My track is really going to have to be black and blue when this is over with. I, uh, poor track. Do I even have any track links left? I mean, he just keeps right on that. All day. That's just, ah. Do, 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 do. And I'm telling Artie, just shoot near the AT-15. You don't even have to hit it. You just have to land in the general postcode of his last position. How many shells has he put into me? A lot. <laughs> you can... I mean, this is annoying. And now that I look back on it, this is just hilarious. He can't actually penetrate my frontal plate without coming up far enough to expose himself to my gun. But he can keep me tracked all day. And then my track, finally, he just stops shooting it and I fix it. That time he hit me. But, you know what? L7 says you die, or you could get killed by him. I'm reloading. Crap. Alright, IS, I'm facing the wrong way. I'm reloading. And I make a bad mistake here. I expose myself to Artie. Now I'm tracked again. IS, however, not only did he roll out where I could shoot him, but Artie, my Artie was also aimed on him as well. So I get to live. My frontal armor stopping enough of the artillery damage to keep me alive. Down to five minutes, by the way. I'm waiting here for a bit to make sure I am unspotted and that there's no chance the Artie sees me move out. Now I start moving. Trying to get a shot on this 
Nice shot, GW Panther. GW Tiger, excuse me. Very good shot. Don't necessarily have a shot on this T95. Our Type 64 is dead. So, I don't know. This guy. I mean, he's just... He's the worst troll ever. Hey, Wargaming. <laughs> you might want to deal with this one. Um, I don't have a shot at him. Artie really needs to relocate and just blast that 95 out of existence. Because they've got the entire battlefield to shoot at it. Battle reported to Wargaming. For what? There's no illegal activity here. There's nothing against the rules. I, however, stop and change to Hesh. Why? Because I'm going to go kill Artie. I'm checking to make sure this T95 just doesn't happen to poke out enough for me to shoot him. And I look up at the timer and I go, eh, Artie needs to probably die here soon. And I tell our Artie, just relocate so you can hit the 95 and end this shenanigans in the swamp. In the meantime, let's go Artie hunting! By the way, in front of my tank, there's a couple of burn marks from artillery shells. There's a hole on the side of it. Yeah, I have absolutely just absorbed a beating. And that AC-15, oh my god, I wish I was in a heavy tank when he was doing that. That would have completed a mission for me. In the meantime, I'm like, wait, if I can spot you, yep, I can shoot you. 230 pin, 480 average damage, kill. Battle reported to Wargaming, clans will be indicted. For what? God. The ISU has just made this match even more. I mean, the tension in this match was being constantly relieved by the ISU just saying stupid shit. Reported for what? I mean, seriously. Uh, Wargaming sent me a ticket back, by the way, and said that all his reports were um, removed from all accounts involved. So, <laughs> guy got what he deserved. I'm going to go check the back of the base here. And I, I, I kind of lose track of the timer. And I shouldn't have. Because I could have capped. And this would have been over. But I also realized they have an arty. It's not going to take a direct hit to kill me and stop the cap. So I need to go find the arty. He's obviously not back here. There's only one other place he could really be. Our Artie has wisely spent their time relocating so they can shoot at the 95 when he's lit again. In the meantime, I'm going to the one spot that their other Artie possibly could be. And there he is. And here's my Hess shell. And you have a good day, sir. Bye. Change to APCR for the T95 and get to the swamp. I've got one minute to get in here and by the way this is before I have brothers in arms so I have a 10.9 second reload and I do I love the Hesh shell so much I just wish I had something for high penetration purposes but eh, Hesh is Hesh you're right one minute come and get you don't mind if I do my 90 hit points of centurion badassery is coming to get you I poke out here, and I'm like, okay, where is he? Go ahead and just push the tree down, and there he is. He can't see me. Tag, you're it. Uh, 10 second reload, you're killing me. You're killing me right now. 30 seconds till the match is over. Ah, oh, crud. He's pulled back. I don't have a shot. Thank you, Artie. That GW tiger p has been on cue the entire time so congratulations harm z the training clan of harm you are a damn good arty in the meantime let's go take a look at the stats for these two matches shall we all right guys so for digger here he has a brothers in arms a high caliber and a top gun with his ace tanker badge in his t40 tank destroyer so congratulations to digger this is an excellent example of how to use this t40 tank destroyer in a defensive manner when your team completely derps and goes all goes one way this also shows you where to defend on lakeville so 1500 damage 
done most of it at point blank range. A little bit blocked by armor. He only got shot twice, which is amazing, but take what you can get. Walks home with almost 22,000 credits in his pocket and 1,500 XP. But this is not the match you guys came here to see. You came to see this one. Ace Tanker, Fighter, Fire for Effect, Spotter, Duelist, Hand of God, Bruiser, Cool Headed, Steel Wall, High Caliber, one shot short of getting the Top Gun as well. If I just stuck around and killed that IS-6 earlier, I might have got it. 4,800 damage with 5 kills. 1,300 raw XP. Also give very much credit to my uh, M109, my Type 64, and my artillery players for this match. You guys did an excellent job at supporting the team overall and making sure to finish off tanks that needed to die. Also Type 64, your 3,100 spotting damage is awesome. I hope that completed, like, all your light tank missions. Now, enemy AT-15, by the way, did a pretty good job, but I'm guessing he started running out of ammo or something. 17 shots fired, 14 hits, 13 pens, so gun is pretty accurate. Not super accurate like the Leopard 1 gun, but still accurate enough. Most of my damage was at ranges less than 300 meters. I wasn't sniping, I was shooting point blank. Thanks to the AT-15, 22 hits received. 18 bounced off the armor. This thing actually has some pretty decent armor. Um, despite the AT-15 just shooting the inside of my track, um, the actual overall hull comes out to something like 190 on the upper plate, plus the angle at which you shoot it from. So it's very trollish for medium tanks to come flying over at it auto-aim and shoot the front and ricochet and go, what? Um, the side armor with the side skirts is also not bad. And as I said, this came down to the wire. There was only 18 seconds left in the battle when the T-95 died, and I don't think I could have made it across the field and actually shot him before the timer ran out. Distance traveled 5.17 kilometers. I moved this tank around. Um, I got a little bit of spotting assistance. I didn't make very much money because I did fire a bunch of hash shells and did get a few misses. Um, but 14,000 credits taken home isn't bad. But here's the kicker. 4,000 XP in the pocket. Not a bad match. Um, and we ran down to the wire. Almost 5,000 damage done. Just, I love this tank. I really, really love this tank now that it's upgraded. Uh, my Centur I loved my Centurion 1 and this tank is no different. It is an awesome amazing vehicle once you get used to it you get used to the gun depression the turret armor and just that absolutely excellent gun that it gets um once you get used to it this tank is just amazing um i would definitely recommend anyone if you want an easy tank line to go down that has a very easy w8 requirement because most of the guns don't have high alpha so they lowered the win 8 requirement because you have to put in repeated shots. But when you, like the Crusader, fires every 0.95 seconds. When you could just bang, 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 bang like a machine gun, you'd be surprised how much damage you can output at an enemy tank between his reloads. But that's all I have for you right now. Don't forget, sign up. Sign up if you want your gold codes. I'm giving out 500, 500 gold. Per code. I have seven codes to give out that Wargaming has given me. So sign up, guys. There's a link in the description below. There's an annotation right now up on the screen. There was one at the beginning of the video as well. Sign up. I'm going to be doing sign ups for the next week. So that's all the way through the 19th. I will be signing you guys up. And then from the 20th until the 26th, I will be giving out 500 gold a day in a random video. I won't tell you what video it's in, so you got you got to watch, and it won't. I won't tell you when it's going to come up. It's just going to be like, oh, by the way, here's a gold code, and here's who it go, and here's who's get, got a gold code today, and all you have to do then is just go check your email. So in the meantime, this is Fiora officially signing out for right now, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank y'all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, 
why not click the like button? It would really help the channel and let me know that you're enjoying my content. Want to see more content? There's a subscribe icon right there so you know when I put up videos I would appreciate it also if you help grow this channel's community. So share this with your friends or just put it up on Facebook. Want to help Fiora out directly? There are three ways you can do this. One is the patronage page, which all the investment towards I put right back into the channel through contests and paying for things like video editing software. Then there are two ways to support the channel directly. One is click the ads that YouTube shows you. This is how YouTube pays its content creators, by your clicks on those advertisements. The other and last way to support the channel is through fan funding that is now available through Fiora's channel page. If you happen to have an extra dollar or two, it would really let Fiora know that her videos mean something to you. Anyway, please check out these other videos here on the end page collage. And as always, I will see you on the battlefield or in the next video. Till then, this is Fiora signing out.